Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Spanning the Need, Kids Edition. Kids, I hope you come close to your computer screen and you'll enjoy tonight because we're trying something very different and we're going to make sure that you learn something. If you don't, we're going to have to find a way to make sure you learn something. So today is a very first of many planned Kids Edition episodes with our science man from Oh Wow Science Center, Mr. Rao. How are you, sir? I'm wonderful, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for joining us on this special occasion. Uh, at the end of this episode, we hope you kids can learn in the comfort of your own home with your parents. So we hope that you're able to just sit back, grab stuff from your house, and just enjoy. So without further ado, let's have some fun. Oh, great. So uh, how long have you been doing this? So you tell us how you got started in, in doing the science thing. You know, the the science part of this just kind of fell into my lap, Anthony. I was a I was a counselor for children for 16 years. I uh, worked with a lot of youth that were having some some issues and uh, quite frankly, a lot of my education came from listening and and helping them out. So, I will say my professors at at college were wonderful, but a lot of my education and how I'm doing what I'm doing now came from just being around the children. They They'll talk to you and, and they teach you to be a good listener. Um, and that's, I think that's extremely important because they let you know when things are not, not copacetic and they let you know when they're having a good time. So um, I really appreciated, you know, the time I spent as a counselor. And then the, oh, wow, uh, position fell into my lap and I, I, I did what, what normal people from the Valley who are blue collar workers, you know, you work your way to the top. I, I started in the facilities department and I was literally going in at 6 a.m. I was cleaning the whole entire museum and all the exhibits. And then when we were ready to open, then I was maintaining the, the facility and had one foot in the education department. And that just kind of steamrolled into uh, where I'm at now. Um, I will say that the people prior to me laid a good foundation uh, and made it very easy for me to transition into the education department. And that and that's great. I mean, you just get to enjoy yourself with the kids. And well, guys, science blow stuff up. <laughs> do a lot of different stuff with our imaginations. And I think that's that's where we're going to start. Right. So, what and do you, you got for us? All right. Well, I, I will say, I'll promise, Anthony, if you continue to keep this collaboration uh, with us, and we really appreciate you doing this with us, I promise that. On a future episode, we will blow something up. And I'm not going to disclose what will blow up, but I promise you, we will blow something up. That's what I like to hear, and I hope to be there in person to do the okay. to do the podcast. But for right now, we're staying in the confines of our own home with our parents, so make sure you guys bring your parents close up. We're going to have some fun. So what do you got for us? All right. So, Anthony, w- one of the things that OWAL strives to do is utilize either upcycled, recycled, donated materials, or things that you would commonly find in your home that may either have gotten thrown out or just has been, it's been sitting for a while, or you just have an overabundance of. So I have a few things in front of me that most most families should have, right? You got straws because everybody likes to drink through a straw, right? And I, and I got, and I'm a very, very big fan of the bendy straw. You know, you can make really cool shapes out of that, right? Spoons, plastic, steel, doesn't matter. The spoon's going to serve as a device for, um, well, I won't disclose what we're doing, but just a plastic spoon. And if you're eating carry out, you know, sometimes these serve as a good purpose. When you're going to go throw them in the garbage, wait, wash them off because I'm going to show you what you can do with this. That looks like an ice cream cream scooper too. Yeah, I will say there's a lot of surface area on here. So one of the things we always talk about is the more surface area you have, the better whatever it is that you're doing, right? M and M's, M and M's, right? Some rubber bands. Um, we always talk about elasticity, so that's you know I, I've got a balloon, but I also have some latex or rubber gloves. You know, um, I had to eat uh, a plenty uh, of banana popsicles to get all these popsicle sticks for you. Um, if you don't have popsicle sticks, tongue depressors or work. Um, I, you saw me gnawing on a on a toothpick. Um, I'll I'll make sure I use the one that I'm not I'm not chewing on. A couple of school erasers, and you know what? In these times, um, when 19 being around, you know, we always tried to stay safe and and keep our you know keep ourselves at a distance. 
I, I'm pretty positive everybody should have something in the way of a plastic water bottle lying around the house. The neat thing about a water bottle is they come in different sizes and shapes, and they're and they're they're some of them are more durable than others. And it's it got me to notice really really well about different companies, you know, making plastic bottles just because bottles continue to get recycled and then upcycled and then recycled and and they become thinner and not real good at at some some of the activities that we're going to do. I'm actually going to reference um, the Fiji bottles that we have. Really good bottle, really durable, strong plastic, a little bit thicker, or even, you know, one of your smart water bottles, okay? Really good to use. Very, very thick, again, thick skin, however you want to describe it. So um, I I guess I'm going to lead off with, I'm in my backyard, and one of the things that I always talk about is utilization of everything around you to do science, right? So with that being said, I literally went out and I just, I picked a blade of grass and my grandfather and grandmother used to uh, sit around with us when we were kids. And, and one of the things that my grandfather taught me is that you can make a reed out of a blade of grass. So if I just took the blade of grass and I put it on one side of my thumb and then put my other thumb on the other side of it and blew. So now it makes a silly noise. It vibrates your lips. It tickles you. But the big thing here is we just literally made a musical instrument out of a blade of grass. This is a reed. This is what instruments are, you know, used to allow the vibrations to produce sound on an orchestra, right? So blade of grass. And I made sure that this was not, um, you know, treated or anything like that, or one of our local pets around the neighborhood took its, you know, its business. But so the segue into that is how can we make uh, an instrument from things lying around our house? Well, here's a really simple way. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need two of those popsicle sticks, okay? This is really simple to do. You take the two popsicle sticks and you and you stack them on one another, okay? Then you're just going to take a rubber band. doesn't matter how big the rubber band is, and you're going to, like, just wrap the rubber band around one end, okay? Now, little hands have a sometimes hard time wrapping a rubber band around a, a, a popsicle stick. So I will say that, like, grownups, if, if, you know, if your child's having a little bit of a time with this, help them out. But, you know, allow them to do this on their own. This is really, really wonderful to allow them to try and, you know, do these things that they wouldn't normally do. So wrapping a rubber band sometimes becomes frustrating, but allow them to do it. All right. So we have our two popsicle sticks, rubber band on one end. And then what I did is I is I cut a little piece of wax paper. Now you can use paper. You can use tin foil, You can use any material that you want. The neat thing is test it out. Some materials work better than others. I just happen to have a piece of wax paper lying around, which happens to be the same length and about the same width as my popsicle stick. And that's going to serve as my reed, okay? And what we want to do is we want to stick that in between those two popsicle sticks, okay? So it's just going to slide right in between there. Now, probably the easy way to do this would have been put the reed in before, right, beforehand, but it's not a big deal. Again, testing it out. All we need is to have that reed inside those two popsicle sticks, all right? The other thing that you may need is a toothpick. Now, I'm going to take the one that wasn't in my mouth, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to break off a little end. We're going to just need that pointed end right there, okay? That's going to slide underneath my wax paper, okay, on one side of my reed. Now, you have to be real careful that you don't smash the wax paper, so you're going to have to manipulate it or the reed or the paper that you're using. I'm actually going to just real quick take this apart. I think Tony and I were talking, you know, it's it's sometimes nice to fail a little bit. I'm actually going to stick my reed in between that popsicle stick first, okay? And I'm going to lay that down, and I'm going to make a little sandwich from my wax paper. If I can get it here. Got a little bit of flowing. And I think that that becomes that, hey, just wash this stuff before you before you use it. Right, and, yeah, yeah. And just, you, you get the popsicles, just wash off with soap, easy soap and water that you're able to just be able to handle it like that. So making sure that nothing's on it, it didn't, if it fell on the ground, just make sure you wash it again. So kids, that you are safe when you're put, picking this stuff up and putting it together with your parents. Yeah, you, don't, you definitely don't want to pick up anything that you don't know where it's been or whose mouth it's been. And that's especially in these times, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I obviously clean my popsicle sticks. I got to that point where they're stacked on one another and I put the rubber band on the one end. All right. So we have one end that's wide open with my little reed inside. Now, this is where this is very important. I'm going to take one of those 
those uh, toothpicks that I broke off there, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to go underneath the wax paper. It's very, very important that you listen to the way I do this, just because I'm going to do this on the opposite side of the wax paper when I go to this end. So the toothpicks on the bottom of the wax paper on this end, I'm going to put it on the top of the wax paper on the other side here. Okay. And that's going to allow a little bit of space and the ability for our reed to vibrate. All right. So I'm going to take the other end of my popsicle stick here. I'm going to break it off. Doesn't matter how big it is. If it's protruding from the ends there, you can always cut those off with just a pair of scissors. And I'll do that in a second just to show you. All right. So we went on the bottom. I'm going to go on the top here. I'm going to squeeze it like a little bit of a sandwich. And then I'm going to wrap up that end as well. All right. And then you're just using normal rubber bands for this, correct? Very simple household Very, items that everyone has most of this, these items in that, in your house. Ab absolutely. It doesn't have to be. It, 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 obviously, if the smaller the rubber band, the less times you have to wrap it. The bigger the rubber band, the more times you have to wrap it. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, those toothpicks are sticking out there. Now, I always tell the families to cut off that little end there, just so you're not poking yourself in the mouth, you know or poking yourself in the nose because of my schnozzle, you know, a plane can land on mine. So I just try to get it out of the way. All right. So we actually have what we made is a, a little harmonica almost or a kazoo. So I'm going to blow into this and you're going to hear a noise and it's going to sound kind of silly. And hopefully y'all get a little laugh out there. All right, ready? Pretty scary, but I'll be, it makes a noise. And that's the whole point here is we literally just learned that a reed can make a different noise. Wax paper is going to sound different than aluminum. Aluminum is going to sound different than a piece of paper. I will say you probably want to use a material that if it does get wet, you don't have to replace it. Obviously, paper is going to get wet. Wax paper is going to get wet, and it's going to start to break apart. So modify, right? How Have you put anything other than wax paper inside that harmonica, if you want to call it? Yeah, I, I, I've used paper before and I've often referenced that you're going to end up having to change that piece of paper just because of the amount of times and the and it's going into your mouth. So it's going to get wet. And most kids have a little bit of time, you know, trying to get that. To, so they don't know if they should blow or push down. Sometimes if you have to, you know, push down with your lips or you can pinch it and make a higher pitch noise. So by just maneuvering and modifying where you're grabbing the harmonica or the, what we call popsicle stick kazoo, mm -hmm. you can alter the sound or the pitch of the noises that you make. So very modifiable and very simple to do. The first, the first noise sounded like Donald Duck. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the first one sounded like Donald Duck. Well, you know what? I, I always, I always appreciate the fact that the sound isn't the same for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Your ears hear something different than mine. And I, I, I probably have to reference the fact that like sometimes when my wife speaks to me, I may hear something, but that's not exactly what she said. So as a man out there, you have to pay a little bit more attention to what's being said to you, right? Well, like I like to say, happy wife, happy life, whatever she <laughs> says goes. I've said that in past, past thing and, and she's probably not listening, but happy life or happy wife, happy life. There you go. There you go. And that's a great, great philosophy, Anthony. Now I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I'm going to stick real quick here with, with, you know, we used that, that reed instrument that we just, we did, we did a blade of grass. We did some popsicle sticks. So you can literally do the same thing with a straw. So I'm going to take my bendy straw here. Okay. And I'm going to cut off that, that end that's, that's bendy right there. Okay. I'm just going to cut that off. So we literally are probably left with about six and a half inches. Okay. Now the neat thing is we can make another instrument out of this, right? I'm just going to bite down on one side and I'm pull out of my mouth. So this becomes flat. Now, again, staying with that reed, we're going to actually cut just a little bit of an angle here. Okay. You can see I've literally made a point on my my straw there okay now you got to be careful that you don't just go jamming this in your mouth or jamming this in your face but when you put this into your mouth and you blow this is going to vibrate just as if that it was the blade of grass or if it was that wax paper in between those two popsicle sticks it's going to cause a vibration it's going to make a noise 
It's probably going to sound a little bit much nicer on the ears here. Let's see if we can do this. And if I cut the straw, I'm going to throw a little question at you, Anthony. If I cut the straw and make it a little bit shorter, do you think the pitch is going to go up or do you think it's going to go down? Maybe our I, viewers out there. I uh, Well, let's – everyone, what what do you guess? Higher or lower? I'll Higher give or you, lower. I'll give you five seconds. All right. Let's see if anybody out there is going to take a guess. Will anyone take a guess? Anyone okay. take a guess? This everyone, is for – Everyone, everyone can – everyone has their guess in. Okay, there we go. My guess, right. my guess is a lower pitch. A lower pitch. All right, here we go. You ready? And no, I don't know the answer, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I was totally wrong. Out of air, so thank you. For yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I was wrong. Uh, I, yeah, that, yeah, I would have so, thought it was. I would have thought it was the other way. I'd have thought it was a lower pitch because of a longer keep cutting. But um, that's why. That's why I'm not a science teacher. Well, you know what, Anthony, and I think the wonderful thing about that is when when we make an educated guess, which is called a hypothesis, right? It allows you to find the answer or go back to the drawing board and, and, and correctly find the answer. So uh, we teach the students that, you know, an educated guess before the experiment happens, which is exactly what you did, which I totally appreciate, uh, and allowing them to, to, to figure it out. So uh, that's the wonderful thing. And, and it's one of the things that we preach at OWOW is making a hypothesis coming up with an answer, modifying what it is that you're doing, and then going back to the drawing board and then reworking the whole entire process over again. Oh, yeah. I would have been to the drawing board six times. <laughs> I will say it's a really, you know, just with a simple straw, you can you can make some serious noise. And I will say, families out there, you got plenty of straws. You can make a lot of these and put them all together, and you can make a really wonderful instrument when you put them all together. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I kind of – I was um, – I remember when I was in science – seventh eighth grade that we used to do these little little things with just household items the could be a like you did with the tooth pops the everything along those lines so i i appreciate that I, it kind of makes me go back to my um six seven year old roots which i'm, I'm about a 12 year old and a 40 year old body like <laughs> most of us so uh, that kind of gives us gives us a, a fun thing with the kids and to relate to the kids. And, and I hope you parents are, are with your kids now appreciating what we're doing, little things just to kind of enjoy yourself, get them to learn something. So what do you got next? All right. So let's, let's shift gears a little bit here. So we learned a little bit about sound and we learned a little bit about pitch and we learned a little bit about making a hypothesis. So if you, if you know anything about the simple machines out there, there are six simple machines. There's the screw, right? The inclined plane, the lever, uh, we've got the pulley. Um, what else do we got? Oh uh, my goodness! Now I'm I'm drawing a blank. Um, but in any case, we've got six simple machines. I'm going to show you one of those simple machines. It's going to come in the way of a lever. This is actually an instrument that was used in medieval days to launch a projectile. Now I used to play a game with my dad called crossbows and catapults. Um, and if you remember that game, I'm dating myself now. Uh, one team was given enough blocks to build a castle. So was the other team. You literally got one crossbow, you got one catapult, and you were to utilize those tools or those simple machines to launch projectiles to knock over the opponent's castle, right? Well, that just fruitioned into a lot of the things that we do at OWL. Who doesn't like to blow things up? Who doesn't like to break things or, you know, knock things over? Well, we're going to build a catapult and we're going to utilize some of those same materials. Again, Nothing really, you know, over the top with trying to find, you know, and go exploring in your house, but you really don't have to find a lot of things. You can use pencils for this. I'm actually going to shift it up here. We use popsicle sticks already. I'm going to use some tongue depressors, right? I will say the modification on this is when we build the base for our catapult, the more that you have, the different results you're going to get. So if you, if you make the base higher, obviously it's going to increase the amount of intensity when you're pushing back 
on your lever and giving it potential energy to then go into kinetic energy. So I'm going to use actually 10 tongue depressors. All right. So, so gonna... for the parents out there, make sure you're watching your kids. And this is where parent advisory comes into play. We are not yeah. held reliable. <laughs> well, yeah, not hold like, but, but I will say there, there is something to allow a child to explore. Now, we normally are practicing safe science. We're wearing our goggles. Obviously, if we're going to blow something up, we're going to wear goggles. In this instance, as long as you understand that you don't want to aim this at anybody and you want to make sure when you're aiming it that there's nobody in front of you. Now, I know, Anthony, we were talking earlier, you know, you had a bag of M&Ms to launch an M&M. You know, even even when you're launching an M&M at someone and you and you think that you can play a game where I'm going to catch the M&M in my mouth, that could get kind of dangerous because if you catch it the wrong way and you don't swallow it, you could choke. So I will say don't try and attempt to catch the projectile. All right. We're not going to do that. I'm actually going to use some erasers. Right. It's back to school time. So I found these just lying around in my house and I grabbed a couple. So if my son or daughter goes to school without erasers, it's my fault. So. We're going to use 10, 10, 10 tongue depressors. We're going to do the same exact thing, Anthony. We're going to wrap one end of those that base of that catapult with the rubber bands. Again, parents, allow the students or your children to make an attempt at doing this. Uh, it really isn't uh, after they get it. I think that that oh, wow moment of, oh, I did it myself is one of the really cool things that we're talking about, is allowing them to do it themselves. And you know what? If they can't or they're having troubles or they're struggling, it's okay. It's okay to let them fail. And I think we preach that all the time is failure is really, really good or failing at something or not getting it right. And maybe fail is not the right word, but getting it wrong the first or second or fifth time allows you to learn. You know, you teach yourself how to, how to do things. You know, we didn't learn how to tie our shoes or ride a bike the first time. You have to fall down a couple of times, right? So I will say that this is a really, really frustrating process is watching students, you know, manipulate a rubber band. So um, just once you get the hang of it, you'll be good and you won't have to worry. And you know what? Again, just make sure that you're practicing safe science and you're not launching or aiming that rubber band at somebody. So we've literally made a base for our catapult. Okay. I wrapped ru one rubber band around one side and one in the other. Now we got to do that again. So I'm going to take two more. Okay. Just the same way. And I'm going to take another rubber band here. I'm going to grab a different rubber band. And we're going to wrap this one. Now, I grabbed one that was longer. Anthony, you referenced they're using smaller rubber bands or bigger rubber bands. The bigger the rubber band, the longer the rubber band, the more you got to sit here and twist and turn, which is fine. All right. This builds up dexterity. Right? It's always good to have dexterity skills. All right. So we've got another one here, rubber band on one end. And you and you can open up the one end. You referenced Daffy Duck. So just like a duck, right? All right. So I've got my base and I've got literally the components to make a catapult. Now, there is one more part that we need to this. We need a basket, right? So we need a basket that's able to hold the projectile that we're then going to launch, right? So I was referencing the fact of us having a spoon, right? My ice, ice cream spoon. spoon. Ice cream spoon. And I will say that the larger surface area that you have with whatever you use. Now, remember, I'm using a spoon. You know what works real well? The caps off of your bottles, right? So when you're using your bottle, not only can you use the bottle for a musical instrument or something of the sort, but you can use the cap and that could either be glued on, taped on or whatever. I'm actually just going to rubber band this on as well. And I'm going to actually put the base of my spoon off the end. Okay. We're going to see if we can get a little bit more lift on our projectile. And I'm going to see if I can launch it in my backyard. So I'm going to take another rubber band and I'm going to wrap that around my spoon. Now you have to be careful that you don't wrap this up around both, okay? That's very important. So what we're going to do here, we're going to wrap it around the end. Keep it closer to the bottom there, just so that it'll stay. Now, if, if you chose to use glue on this, glue's real wonderful. Um, hot glue really works. I will say if you're using hot glue or any chance of utilization of hot glue, just be real careful. Um, but hot glue is really cool because then you can put, you know, a little bit of hot glue underneath here so that your, your, your base or your basket stays still. Um, you could put it on the straw or whatever you need. But in any case, we've literally got 
our launching mechanism. Now, I'm just going to take that base, okay? And then I'm going to slide these two popsicle sticks right as far down as I can go. Now, you don't, you don't want to go too far because you, you take the risk of breaking, okay, those popsicle sticks. Now, this is the most challenging part of this because now you're going to have to, and you may want to get uh, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or your caregiver to help you out on this. We're literally, if you notice, I push this down. So I'm holding it with, with one finger. I'm holding it just like that. We need to actually make a cross here, one here and one here with rubber bands. So we have to wrap, wrap the rubber bands in almost like an X factor. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to take one of these longer rubber bands. I'm going to wrap them around caddy corner, all the whilst of pushing and giving a little bit of force on my catapult here. So if you notice, I'm going around the, and I'll show you in a second here. I literally went around, okay, right here. All right, I went just down, okay? So we have to do another X. So I'm gonna do that on this side as well. Go to the other side. And I will say, this is part of the frustration. You know, kids will get frustrated because they can't get that rubber band to stay on there. Um, and the caddy cornerness, um, you got to kind of stretch that rubber band around it. But once you get the hang of doing this and stretching that rubber band out so it goes around both sides, it'll be good. I'll just show a quick, real quick. All right, so I made an X here, okay? And I, and I wrapped a rubber band. I went on the outsides, okay? Outsides of here. And that allowed us to open up these two popsicle sticks to give us the ability for potential energy, which is then going to translate into kinetic energy. So I'm going to set this. We're going to see um, if we can launch this. Maybe what I'll do is I'll see if I can just get right right at the camera there. Now, Anthony, maybe maybe you go ahead and go ahead and open your mouth, and I'll see if I can launch this this eraser right right into your mouth there. All right, All right everybody, here we go. We're going to go. Oh, it went over the camera. It went yeah. to the outside the gazebo there. It went over there. Yeah. Missed. It went over there. It would be it would have been great if you'd have had a racer available behind you and went. Oh, yeah, there, oh, there it is. <laughs> well, hey, I would have. It would have worked. Yeah. So, another neat little experiment. You know, obviously, we just did almost three or four things in a matter of you know a few minutes, just by utilization of things that you would find. Whether you went out and 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 had some you know Chinese or. Uh, take out food and you kept the plastic spoons that they give to you um, or you know you took a visit to the doctor or you ate a lot of banana popsicles these are things that you know you're really not consciously thinking about when you're eating or you're you know you're just doing your normal routine but everything can be utilized or upcycled to be utilized for something you know scientific so we try to stay stay close to what our our mission statement is, and, and that's, you know, making sure that we give every opportunity for every student to learn something, but have fun while you're doing it, right? Well, and I think at the end of the day, we want parents to come with their kids, no matter how old they are, and really make a connection of science and, and understanding the little things that they are able to accomplish. And, and I think that brings... Uh, we want you to go above, think, think high, think that you're going to really do something in the world and don't get anyone to say no to you. You just do what you love. Right. Right. And I, and I think ultimately it's, it's, you know, allowing your, yourself to, to be an explorer, to, to go out and, 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 and try something, you know, whether it's science or, or whatever it may be, but, you know, just being your own person and having the ability to go out and if it doesn't work the first time or if you haven't achieved what you need to achieve, modifying what you do and then moving forward and just having a big smile on your face. I mean, we're at the museum 24 hours a day, you know, mentally or physically. And I, and I say that very loosely, but we are. I mean, I'm at the museum all day long. I'm thinking of things to do only because, you know, there are moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas out there that do the best that they can. And sometimes it is, it's a challenge to come and find ways to keep your students engaged. Right. So this mm -hmm. is a very simple way to, you know, learn, have fun, and maybe, maybe segue into another science activity, maybe something else. Exactly. So let's, let's go over what we've learned today. Okay. So we, so tell us all the things that we've done today and let's go over them one last time. 
All right, so obviously we learned a little bit about sound and how uh, vibrations travel through the air, right? You know, we we pick up sounds through the sound moving through the waves in the air, right? And they they move and they go right into our ears and they tap on our our eardrum right there. That's a little little thin membrane inside your ear and it, it vibrates. When it vibrates, it it touches sensors in your in your ear that then translate that sound into your brain your brain's a very powerful powerful muscle so then that tells you what's going on so we made a reed out of a piece of grass we were able to cause the 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 grass to vibrate between my thumb and made and then we made a reed okay vibrate in sort of like a harmonica fashion just by making two popsicle sticks stuck together blowing through there and vibrating that wax paper now again you don't have to use wax paper you can use regular you know, construction paper, you can use aluminum foil, test them out, you know, try it out. Um, but essentially we made a reed instrument. I took the straw and and sort of just stayed on that same course of a reed being able to be blown on and vibrate in your mouth to make a different noise just out of a, a silly straw. Um, and then obviously we learned a little bit about Newton's laws, right? Or, you know, it could have been a simple machine. Lever, right? When it's pulled has potential energy. We made a catapult. That lever that's pulled has kinetic or potential energy. And when it's released, launches a projectile that then becomes kinetic energy. Now there's also a little bit of elastic energy here with the rubber bands and some mechanical energy when you're moving your fingers. But those are the, that's the verbiage when we're doing these experiments as we're talking about mechanical energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. And it just, you know, I always enjoy the students saying, you know, Mr. Ralph, look, look, I got a balloon. This is, you know, this is potential. This is kinetic, you know, and or blowing into a balloon and teaching them that, you know, the gas that's coming from our lungs, right, is not the gas that's really good for us. It's carbon dioxide. We breathe in oxygen, but you're blowing carbon dioxide into a balloon to blow it up. So, um, yeah, I, I, there, it's it's funny how time flies when you're doing stuff like this, but you can learn so many things. And again. A blade of grass could teach you a lot about what reed instruments, you know. Do. So. And, and those are just a, a great review of what we just went over. So I appreciate you taking time. Are you interested in a little Q&A? I have some questions from, well, I, I would hope they're kids, but well, I don't know if they're kids or adults. Oh, absolutely. I, I'd love to. I, I'll do the best I can. And if I, if I don't have the answer, I'll find it for you. That's for sure. So this first question is from coming from Kayla. The question is, is what is your best science experiment that you love to do? Oh, that's okay. So Kayla, that's, that's an easy one. Um, I have, and, and Oh Wow has a wonderful collaboration with uh, Youngstown State University's chemistry department. There's a young man there. His name is Tim Styrenic, and he allows me. Uh, the I know Tim. Yeah, I know Tim. He gets me liquid nitrogen whenever I say, Tim, I need liquid nitrogen. <laughs> if you know anything about liquid nitrogen, it is minus. 319 degrees. It's so cold that if you stuck your hand in it, you probably wouldn't have enough time to understand what just happened, but it instantly freezes things. And with liquid nitrogen, you can make clouds and you can blow things up. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful, uh, I would say, uh, tool that we use at OWOW to teach uh, what we call an endothermic or an exothermic reaction. That's a, and I know Tim. Tim's a great guy at Youngstown State um, over in that biology chemistry with Dr. Walker yes. and, and Dr. Sturgis, who are very, very great guys that uh, that are very student oriented, that love kids. So I, I, uh, I encourage you guys to go to the planetarium at Youngstown State and enjoy the science. And, and, and just for that question, I, I'm going to I'm going to throw this out there if Kayla's still listening or if you have the ability to, to respond to her. You let her know that she has a free pass from Mr. Ralph to come to Oh Wow. When our doors open and you're allowed in, Kayla, you're you've got a free pass. I'm saying it right here, right now. So you just say, Mr. Ralph said I'm allowed to come in for free today. So that's there it. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> so this question is from Mike. Uh, should pop up. If you would like to do one experiment in your life, what would it be? Wow, Ooh. that's a, that's a great question. I guess. Um, remember, remember. I think I'm interpreting it that it's anything. So even if you get like access to NASA stuff, yeah, I, I think I've always had a fascination with, um, you know, the cannonball um, launcher at a circus. 
<laughs> where a person gets launched out of it. And I've often thought, you know, that would be a great uh, exhibit to have in the museum where we could literally launch students and family members into this big vat of, and I thought, you know, jello or slime would be fantastic. But I think, I think I want to get launched out of a cannonball, you know, j- just to see that experience and, and, you know, how far could you go? And, and, and I always want to get launched into a big pool of jello. That would be awesome. Awesome. Really cool. Super fun. What kind of jello? Cherry jello. Definitely cherry jello. There we go. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time tonight. I appreciate what you do at Oh Wow. And, uh, and hopefully we can continue to do this in the future. We'll have more kids edition moving forward. So, always a pleasure, my man. You're always welcome on the show. Anthony, I appreciate that. And 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 likewise, you know, you, you now become part of the Oh Wow family. So, anytime that you and your lovely wife, your, your new lovely wife, right? Thank uh, you. Or your, your family wants to come down and visit. Oh, wow. You're more than welcome. You're, not, you're now part of the family, man. Well, we'll continue to do this this fall with our kids learning in the comfort of their own home and this partnership that we're doing with Oh, wow. Thank you to everyone for taking the time to learn with us and joining us tonight. Stay tuned with special announcements every morning on our, on my YouTube channel. Be safe and God bless.